What budget purchase ended up being your best buy ever? I was traveling in Japan and needed nail clippers. All I could find is this cheap pink Hello Kitty grooming kit. These clippers are the best I've ever owned. They have stayed sharp and functional for 20 years. I'm very protective of them. Everyone in the house knows you don't touch Dad's pink Hello Kitty nail clippers. And if you do, you perish. A guy said there were a bunch of bricks in his backyard he wanted to get rid of. Five bucks for all of them if you'd come and pick them up because they were larger than regular bricks and very heavy. I grabbed a friend and headed out because I needed some cheap bricks for the edging of my garden. Guy's house was across the river and in some really run-down looking neighborhood. Really glad I grabbed my friend at this point. We pull up and the guy is waiting outside. He looks like he's 80, but I know he must have been a 35-year-old guy who just smoked 10 packs a day. So the guy takes us to his backyard and shows us the pile of bricks, which turns out to be 50-plus antique Louisville fire bricks. So I look at the guy and tell him, I'll take half of them, and as payment, I'll give you $20 and some advice. And of course, the guy is looking at me like I'm an idiot, but he accepts my money and helps me and my friend load up about 30 bricks. After I close my truck and get in the car to drive off, I tell him to Google the antique fire bricks and adjust his Craigslist listing. I went back to look at the listing a few days later, and he had changed the price from 5 bucks for the whole pile to 5 bucks per brick, which was the going rate at the time. Nowadays, they go for 20 bucks per brick. Best buy ever. A seed packet from the dollar store. While in college, my boyfriend and I were broke. Really broke. But I still wanted to do something to celebrate spring. We were getting a few cheap things at the dollar store when I noticed they were selling these seed packets from a big old bin that you had to dig through. Four for one dollar. No tax. I immediately begged to buy one despite our strict budget. Boyfriend was incredulous I'd want to buy sketchy seeds, but dutifully handed me a quarter. I ended up picking out tomatoes. Well, we got home and I carefully placed about three seeds in washed out cans. I watered them and watched them sprout. I loved tending to my little garden. I ended up with three beautiful, huge tomato plants. It was a bumper crop. More than we could eat. I sold the extra produce to my classmates. I made about 25 bucks. Good seeds. For the umpteenth time, the narrator is resisting the urge to buy a plot of land, some seeds, and live out his Stardew Valley dreams. Not yet. Not yet. My dad bought me a flannel jacket for two bucks, from the equivalent of a dollar store in 1994. Wore it for everything you can think of. I wore it yesterday. Still going strong after 25 years. It's amazing that the jacket held up, yes. But special kudos to you for still being able to fit in it for 25 years. I was traveling from a different city straight into work, where my uniform was a white shirt with a conspicuously black bra. Wasn't stopping home, so I did stop on the first corner store I found and bought a $5 white bra that looked roughly my size, as they had nowhere to try them on, just to wear for one night at work. 10 out of 10, comfiest bra I ever owned. Wore it every day of my life for about a year. It gave in at some point, but it was still a $5 bra. But gosh darn, I dream of the day when all of my bras fit that well. I too have a bra of mystery. First strike, I brought it from a grocery store. Second strike, it was marked down to two bucks and plastered with stickers reading, Final Sale, No Returns, We're Not Liable If This Kills You, I'm Sure There Are People Who Love You, and the like. Third strike, upon ringing it through, the cashier did a double take at the screen, looked at me with great concern, and asked if I was sure I wanted to buy it. After failing to self-combust and send me straight to hell, it wound up being one of the nicest bras I ever had. Wore it for two years before the inevitable underwire chest shanking. I still wonder what they thought was wrong with it. I was giving these college-aged women a lift ride. One asks how that Craigslist thing went, so my ears perked up. The other says something like, He complained it went back too far, just don't put it back so far, duh. Eventually I deduce that they're talking about a recliner, which I've been looking for one for some time now. I interject and ask about it. The lady has a lazy boy electric recliner she just wants 20 bucks for. I'm like, listen, I know it's sketchy, but if you've got Craigslist randos in your house, Lyft at least gave me a background check. We pull up, I end the ride, and follow these ladies into their house. I knew I wanted it as soon as I laid eyes on it, so this college chick is helping me stuff a recliner into my back seat, and all I can think this is how Buffalo Bill kidnapped that girl in Silence of the Lambs. 20 bucks for a recliner so lazy it reclines for me. 
The seller listed several two-month-old kittens on Craigslist, first come, first serve. We pull up to an area of town known for its high crime and substance addicts at like 11 at night. Seller plops this impossibly tiny kitten into my hand wordlessly. She was only three weeks old and the seller gave us some crap about how her sister's cat just had kittens and she didn't want to make a whole new post about it. Kittens were listed for 10 bucks. The seller was asking for 15. All we had was a 20. I looked at my now fiancé and we knew no one else was going to take care of this cat. We drove that kitten home in a laundry basket. Nearly three years later, that kitten is attached to my hip and I can't think of a better 20 buck investment. I too bought my kitty for 20 bucks on Craigslist from a legit crystal addict. I'd never had a cat before and this little meow factory has been my best friend ever since. A no-label old beat-to-crap vinyl acetate record with handwritten, that'll be the day, on it, paid one dollar. Ended up being a live Buddy Holly recording. I sold it for $970. I bought a blanket in Mexico in 1986 for five bucks. I still have it and it's super soft and comfy. It's been abused, washed, and other things, and it's still in great shape. $12 rain boots at Value Village. I've thrashed these things living in rural Alaska, and they're still totally watertight two years later. Stain removers from the dollar store are surprisingly effective. I bought a tub of toothpaste called Right Clean, and then when I looked closely, the cap said Colgate, so I'm guessing companies sell their excess supply to dollar stores and just relabel the contents. I work as a day laborer at a plant that made mayonnaise. We probably made 30 different brands of mayo from store brands to national brands. They would stop the filling machine, we would change the bottles, caps and labels, then keep right on running putting the same stuff out of the same vats into all the different bottles. I heard the same thing from a person who worked in a green bean factory. They'd just slap a different label and keep it rolling. I bought a small turtle from a gas station in Florida when I was in the first grade. Max proudly lived until the end of my senior year. I am loving all the cute pet stories coming out of this story grouping. Honestly, I just assumed it would be all Walmart and eBay finds. At the end of a long road trip with some mates, I brought a 20 buck pair of sunglasses in a gas station just outside Chicago. They fit me better than any pair of sunglasses ever did or ever will, and they made me look awesome. For years, I constantly received compliments about them and was asked where I got them. I lost them after five long years and have hated myself for it ever since. They were so no-name they didn't even have a brand name on them at all. So I have no idea who made them. I have no way of finding that gas station either. I've literally spent hundreds of bucks trying to find sunglasses that came close to that perfect fit and style. But I can't. I randomly found a wedding videographer online and booked him for a very affordable rate for my wedding, assuming it wouldn't be very good quality. Two weeks after the wedding, he emails me a high-quality, well-edited video. He had a drone I hadn't noticed because he was outside of the venue getting B-roll with it before I even started getting ready for my big day. I was floored and now I recommend him to everyone who ever plans to get married, ever. To update, he's definitely upped his prices since then and rightfully so, because he does great work. He did the videography from my wedding last summer. I drive cars so old they all still have tape decks. I bought this fake cassette tape with a headphone style plug that comes off it. You put the tape in the player just like it was a cassette and plug the jack into your phone, and it uses the car's speaker system as an external speaker for the phone. I was so skeptical of it working because it was all of five bucks and I've been using it at least ten years and it works perfectly and beautifully. Plus bonus side eye every time I pull it out to use it with someone new in the car. I bought a $17 toaster about 20 years ago and it's still going strong. I went to buy a used lawnmower and ended up buying their very old dog for ten bucks. He had never been allowed indoors, never rode in a car, went to a park or had a bath. We had a good five years of firsts. Best ten bucks I ever spent. I bought a button-down shirt from the thrift store in the mid-90s and I still wear it today. The shirt is obviously even older. It doesn't have much wear on it either. I think it's made of rayon or something else. The brand is Kmart. They don't make them like they used to. A little $40 speaker set for my bedroom TV I got in 2006 and still works great in 2019. I bought a fake wood, plastic mantle clock from Value City for about 10 bucks because I needed something for my first apartment. I received a surprising number of compliments on it and was asked more than once if it was a family heirloom because it looked so old. It also lasted for about 10 years until some movers broke it. 
I was kind of proud of displaying that stupid cheap clock. I was in a market in Shanghai, one of those ones that attracts foreigners with knockoffs of nice brands, where you're supposed to haggle a bit with the store owner. Walked into an electronic store looking for a portable speaker. Negotiated the store owner down over the JBL speaker that basically was the size of a thermos. I think she originally wanted 200 yuan for it, and I got it for 125. The exchange rate was about 6.5 yuan for $1, so it was about 21 bucks. The owner went out back and got a blank white box and an envelope. Inside the box was a blank speaker without decals. Decals were in the envelope. She then proceeded to put the decals on the speaker in front of me, using tweezers for precision. This was my very first time in China, so it really caught me off guard. The speaker is actually amazing. Very loud, 6-8 to eight hours battery life, and perfect for storing in a cup holder. I mostly use it on a golf course, which is perfect. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. We bought an Ellis Island boat tour in New York from one of the guys on the streets. We were led into a van and treated extremely well so we weren't immediately sketched out too badly. We don't know New York, so we ended up driving 20 minutes through Manhattan by three men to an apparently abandoned sketchy dock with no one else there. That's when we were convinced we were being scammed or sold into human trafficking. Gave us a post-it note with a number and they said to go around the abandoned factory to the pier and they were waiting for us. So we took our naive tourist butts around the building, alone, expecting nothing and they would just pull off and scam us. Sure enough, we turned the corner and there was a big boat with a bunch of people and it was legit. We had an amazing tour and a lot of fun with free food and drinks, so overall a great decision, but in hindsight we should have been murdered or at least scammed. I risked a huge box of magic cards. I spent around 200 bucks. It easily came out to about two or three thousand dollars worth. This box was just a random pickup on the internet from Craigslist. My best purchase of magic cards was a store under new management. I went in with my two elementary school-aged sons, as a mother that taught them to play, and I asked to purchase the two large boxes in bulk. But because they had not had time to catalogue their cards, they agreed on 10 cents apiece. At least two of the cards combined were valued at 80 bucks, and I bought hundreds. It's been some years since I've played, at least three or four years since I've purchased any. I wonder how much they're valued at, but I don't have the heart to part from them. I started playing in 97, and I have cards prior to that. Fugly or sad and misshapen potted plants from the grocery store. They just need some love and it's so fun to see them grow. This person is a dark mirror of the narrator who consistently buys nice plants and proceeds to kill them all over a period of weeks. Teach me your secrets, internet person. A $27 dash cam. I got it off Amazon. Its shaper image included an SD card and was 27 bucks. I thought it was going to be a waste. It wasn't. I have it on whenever I drive. Turns on automatically. Records automatically. You can turn auto rewrite on or off. Has a high quality camera, infrared LEDs for nighttime driving, and the mounting mechanism works great. It's stable and has never fallen. It's not 4K recording, but it's 1080, high 120 FPS, and was 27 bucks. When some others can run up into the high hundreds, 10 out of 10 would buy again. 10 out of 10 would give to someone. It actually works great and was 27 bucks. My dog was a stray, adopted by a couple but returned because he was too high energy. So his adoption fees were 50%, the best 45 bucks I've ever spent. I went to Mexico a few years back with my family, and it was our first time there. We only left the hotel once because it was so gosh darn hot. On that day, after visiting an ancient temple, we decided to go to a cenote to swim and cool off. We arrived at the bus station and this kind of sketchy taxi driver approached us and asked where we wanted to go. My father mentioned a very popular cenote, but the taxi driver recommended a quieter place and said he'd do it for half price, even though it was already dirt cheap. For some reason, my father agreed, which I thought was mad, so me and my family got in his taxi and drove off. We were riding down the freeway when he starts indicating left. I see no road where he's indicating. We turn off onto a dirt track and into the jungle. For about 10 minutes, we were getting deeper and deeper into the jungle until we reach a house. My father is told to get out and pay at the small shack and the rest of us aren't allowed out of the car. Five minutes pass and by this time we're freaking out in the car. 
I didn't really feel like getting kidnapped or anything, but my father returns and we continue into the jungle. Soon we reach a clearing with a few people smoking around a table, and a couple with swimsuits on. Now I'm a bit more relaxed because there are other customers there. After getting changed, we have a short walk to this beautiful, crystal clear cenote with overhangs and plants hanging down. It was amazing. We got out and thought money well spent, but then we were led on a tour around four other cenotes where we swam under bats hanging in caves and learned about the history of the cenotes. To top it off, I got to jump off a 10-foot drop into a pool where I could see the bottom about 20 feet below the surface. Best experience we had in Mexico and I'd love to go back, but I don't think I've ever been so frightened as I was going down that deserted dirt road. Went to a garage sale, there was a little girl in charge. She's like 12. I don't know crap about turntables, but she has a set on a table. I ask how much, and she tells me 20 bucks. I ask her if they work, and she tells me she has no idea. Her dad got new ones and wanted to get rid of these. I wait for dad, and she tells me he's sleeping. She says, dude, just take them. I'm like, no, $20 can't be right, maybe 200? She looks at me like I'm stupid. Fine, I'll take them for 20 bucks. I drive straight to the pawn shop and see what I can get for them, or if they even work. They frickin' work. The guy looks up prices and comes back with a $1,200 offer. The best 20 bucks I've ever spent. I bought this shirt from a market for 5 bucks. It fits so darn well I've started using it as my main shirt. Knock off North Face hiking shoes in Vietnam. They cost me 20 bucks. Kicked the crap out of them and they're still going strong. Bought some Britney Spears tickets in a back alley near the Phillips Arena, downtown Atlanta, from this sketchy guy. Our dumb butts were all excited because it was a great deal for the seating. Keep in mind, this is when tickets were printed from home, and they're huge to scan. The pair that we brought were the OG Ticketmaster tickets, you know, the tiny pair that you had to wait at FYE in the mall for. I got in line and go through the main door, and they don't scan. Frick. We knew we were scammed immediately. Then they physically examine our tickets and say, I don't know why these aren't scanning, but your seats are that way. Walk all the way down to our numbered section and there's one guy sitting in a chair by this massive wall with a single door to walk through. Homeboy physically examined our ghetto tickets. He's like, oh, never seen these before. But he said, this way please, and I'll be damned. We're seated in the section where the local businesses buy the sweets and crap for their employees. Food and alcohol was free. We had phenomenal seats and got a free shirt and program. I still can't believe it happened. Not my purchase, but still one of the best. My brother gifted me a Snuggie one year for Christmas. I had painstakingly tracked down a bootleg album he wanted, and he got me a buy one, get one free Snuggie. I didn't speak to him for weeks. I have routinely used that damn Snuggie for every camping trip I've been on for the last seven years, and I'll tell you it's become the most useful gift I've ever gotten. I bought official PlayStation wireless headphones for 20 euros a few years ago. They usually cost about 70 euros brand new. I thought it was a sketchy sale, but nope, they're fine and I still use them to this day. I got an adjustable phone mount at the dollar store when I had an iPhone 4. Still use the same one with my iPhone X. Well, that has to be the only case in recorded history of an iPhone accessory not being made redundant after one or two generations. $17 Target brand boat shoes. I brought them about six years ago, and I just wore them randomly for things like going to the grocery store or running down to my car. Then I found they were great practice shoes for disc golf. They lasted one and a half years of planting and twisting on concrete before they finally folded. Went back and they've been discontinued for years. Rest in peace. Target continually changes their clothing section, so if you like something, buy multiples of it, because it'll be gone or rebranded in like six months. Costco Fluffy Flannels It feels like a chinchilla is hugging you, and I've had mine for three years with no signs of wearing down, despite almost daily use in the northeast winters. My wife got this fluffy fleece blanket from Costco, short on one side, long on the other, and oh my freaking god, I let nobody touch it but me. Flight Cargo Escort for Discounted Tickets I flew to Shanghai from New York for about $200 total, on JAL Business Class. In return, I had to sign to take responsibility for cargo on the flight. I saw the cargo on the loading dock. It was a pallet covered in camouflage tarp. I received my tickets in person upon arrival at JFK. I'm pretty sure I helped traffic substances or weapons across borders. I can't remember the name of the company. Also, I don't think it exists anymore because it was sketchy as F. 
So, how much did you pay the smuggler? Nothing. He actually paid me 200 bucks. This bamboo back scratcher my wife got me for 3 bucks like 15 years ago. It's right here next to me. I use it to scratch my back, gesticulate when I pontificate, fend off my cats, annoy my cats, and use as a tuning fork to make strange noises to annoy my wife. I joke that in the event of a house fire, this back scratcher is the only thing besides my wife and cats that I'd take with me. That's not a joke though, I really would go for it first. One of those square, window-sized box fans. Technically wasn't a purchase. I found it outside the dumpster of my junior year college apartment back in 2008. I'm a fan of airflow and white noise, so that fan ran 24 hours a day for nearly 11 years outside of when I was away on vacations and for brief periods in winter. Most of that on the lowest setting, but I mean there were long stretches of literally months where it wasn't turned off. It died in 2019 when I can only assume some critical component just burnt out. <sighs> I'll miss you, completely free thing that provided me a decade of light breeze and air circulation. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.